Okay, let's close out this chapter with uh, a little bit of uh, introduction to how glacial, deglacial cycles are forced. So remember, if we go back uh, beyond about 10,000 years, uh, or let's say even a little bit further back, the impact of humans or human ancestors like Neanderthals and Devonians and uh, Floriensis and others was minimal, uh, then you can uh, assume that everything that was changing was a natural variability. So you have to understand what are the major forcings uh, if you go to billion year time scales, obviously continents moving, mountain building, changes in ocean configuration, uh, ocean pathways, uh, uh, weathering rates and so on would become factors as well. But once uh, you have whatever continents given, throughout the Earth's history you also have what are called orbital parameters and Milutin Milankovic was the first one to put mathematical formulations to it and show that these can be predicted accurately using the orbits uh, and the gravitational pull of other planets and so on and so forth. James Kroll had done that also before Milen Milankovic but he only heuristically argued for them in terms of uh, glacial uh, ice ages being forced by orbital parameters. So these are now known as Milankovic cycles you know that uh, Earth orbits around the Sun in an elliptical orbit. The ellipticity of the orbit itself changes on a 100,000 to 400,000 year time scales, but the change in eccentricity is very small. Uh, nonetheless, when the eccentricity changes, the distance from the Sun itself changes, so the amount of energy being received uh, changes but that change is uh, relatively small. Nonetheless, uh, uh, el ellipticity is one of the major orbital parameters we have to worry about. Okay? The other one is the obliquity itself. So the Earth is uh, tilted with respect to the orbital plane at right now at 23 and a half. Over uh, some 41,000 year time scale, uh, it varies from 22.5 to 24.5 degrees, uh, so you can see that here. Obviously when that happens, the seasonal distribution of energy from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere or sorry, from the summer to the winter hemisphere changes because you are either facing more towards the sun in one uh, season and uh, farther away from the sun in the other season and the opposite for the other hemisphere and so on. So the total energy doesn't change but the distribution, seasonal distribution of energy changes which can still uh, uh, introduce climate changes. And remember what we said with uh, ice albedo feedbacks, radiation forcing uh, provides a trigger and then it's the internal feedbacks in the Earth system like the ice albedo feedback which produce a time scale. So the time scale uh, is not necessarily coming entirely from the orbital parameters. The internal feedbacks produce time scales. How to think about it? For example, wherever you are, um, sun goes up, sun goes down. So there is a diurnal forcing. At night there is no radiation. During the day there is radiation. Uh, and sun goes south, sun goes north. So you have summer and winter. And yet weather can change multiple times a day because there are a lot of internal feedbacks. There could be sea breeze, land breeze, mountain winds, uh, there could be clouds, there could be uh, rain orographically or convection. So these internal feedbacks can produce time scales that are not there in the forcing itself. Okay? This happens at weather time scale, climate time scales, as well as long geologic time scales. Of course, at climate time scales, sun is in one hemisphere for six months and the other hemisphere for six months. Ocean can take up a lot of heat during that season and store the energy and release it slowly on all kinds of time scales. So the weather and climate have, have very rich spectrum of time scales which uh, are important to remember. Anyway, coming back to the orbital uh, uh, parameters, there is also the so-called uh, precession time scale, which here is shown as the wobbling of the Earth uh, around its axis, like a top that is spinning when it slows down, it begins to wobble before it stops. So that is one, that's the uh, 
precession of the axis, but one has to be careful because there is also so-called apsidal uh, precession or precession of the orbit. So here is the ellipticity or eccentricity change. Uh, the most common word is eccentricity, not ellipticity. Obliquity change or the change of the tilt, the uh, precession of the axis, which we just looked at, and precession of the orbit. The precession of the orbit is caused by gravitational pull of the other uh, 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 planets in the system like uh, Jupiter and Venus and so on. Um, what does this mean in real term? Right now in the current configuration we have uh, solstices and equinoxes, right? March and September and June and uh, uh, December and when the uh, precession pulls the orbit then those equinoxes and solstices change unless you change the calendar but again it's known from mathematical formulations exactly when those happen so if you think about the time scales here it is almost sinusoidal um, so the eccentricity change is a hundred thousand years uh, you can remember that one even though there is a 400,000 year time scale as well and the tilt uh, happens at 41,043, 41 to 43 there are a range there for various reasons so you can see it is much faster than the eccentricity and the precession together is at uh, 21 thousand uh, years or 23,000 you can check it it ranges from 19 to 26,000 but the median is somewhere or the average is somewhere around uh, 21 or 23,000 years okay so it's uh, much faster so even though this energy change is not much uh, it turns out that this one modulates the precession so the eccentricity and precession together produce a time scale which gives uh, a glacial deglacial time scale okay so here we are looking at eccentricity over time uh, you can see that it is not uh, the changes are not very uniform as uh, we saw here uh, so you can see the eccentricity changes from 0 0.04 to uh, almost zero and back and so on so that's happening on a uh, hundred thousand uh, years earth in a circular or orbit versus earth in an elliptical orbit highly exaggerated because this is a very small change the tilt is changing on about 41,000 years uh, time scale as I said uh, you can see that uh, here in a more realistic uh, depiction and the uh, precession time of the perihelion uh, is happening on the uh, 20,000 or 21,000 year uh, time scale you can approximately remember the, the time scales because they are uh, not constant in there are details that you can look up okay so the location so tilt of the earth's axis when orbit is closest to the sun uh, so the time of the perihelion it can happen in uh, uh, December September back in uh, September and so on and so forth so that changes uh, as the uh, precession uh, moves things or uh, the uh, obliquity moves things around so net net we end up with northern summer insulation in watts per meter squared changing like this over a complicated uh, time scales we are looking at half a million years thousands of years so you can see that the change here is not enough to explain the full range of ice ages because small perturbations in radiation are amplified by internal feedbacks like the ice albedo feedback and uh, if there are continental movements of, co of course they matter as well uh, plus depending on where the continents are the glaciation may be easier uh, weathering rates may be faster circulation may favor certain uh, ocean uh, uh, heat uptake and so on and so forth so all kinds of details go into this but if we go back to our map we looked at before so here we had these uh, low frequency variability which are not as well resolved when we go back in time so we had uh, glacial periods here in the uh, Ordovician and Silurian in the Carboniferous and uh, Permian uh, no this is uh, 
this is Pukpuru, uh, I forgot what this one is. So here is Jurassic and Cretaceous and here is the Oligocene. Okay, so, but there is the 41 kilo year cycle here which is more like an orbital time scale. There is a 100 kilo year time scale here which is uh, more the eccentricity time scale but actually it turns out to be a combination of eccentricity and uh, precession. Okay, so that is a short, short, short introduction to Milankovitch cycles, uh, which are very really critical for the pacing of the uh, glacial cycles. Obviously, we can see when are the next orbital changes kicking in and how the orbital changes have been uh, 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 affecting or modulating the climate over uh, the uh, Holocene. Uh, and global warming is essentially. Uh, delaying the arrival of the next ice age uh, because in terms of just the cycling based on uh, orbital parameters uh, we came out of the last uh, ice age about 18,000 to 12,000 uh, years ago we should be heading back slowly towards the next ice age so now the key question is how is global warming affecting the natural beat of Milankovitch cycle Okay, so this is the end of this chapter. The next chapter is uh, really nice. It's on theories. So we'll come back and uh, start on theories in the next podcast.